morning, everybody. Morning. Nice and loud. Make it sound like a lot of people here. Morning. 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 Alright. So today's message title is Prophet's Warning. The Prophet's Warning. So let's bow our heads in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father God, God, we thank you for this day, this Sabbath day. We thank you for this gathering of your people, Father, as we read and understand and hear your word this morning. Please soften our hearts and allow us to have courage, God, knowing that if we soften our hearts, Father, that you will protect us, that we don't need to harden ourselves in this, in this fallen world, God. That we can just open up our hearts to you. Trust you, God. Help us to have an open mind. Forgive us of our sins. Keep us from distraction. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Alright. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Alright. So again, the title, The Prophet's Warning. We're going to be going into God willing a few of these. Uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so today we're going to learn about a prophet in the Old Testament. His name was Joel. Joel was a prophet in the Old Testament, which is known in a section of prophets. There's 12 prophets called the Minor Prophets. Not called the Minor Prophets in the Bible. It's something that man had created that said that they call the Minor Prophets. Not because they're not some, they're not no big deal. Just because of their, their books are small. Okay, so they just coined them the minor prophets. So there's 12 prophets. We're going to be talking about the prophet Joel today. Some people aren't sure of the exact time when Joel was actually preaching. Some believe it was between 835 BC to 796 BC. And others say it's more around 600 BC. And that's based on different things that are said in the book of Joel. The Bible doesn't give us a lot of history on him. Um, but there's definitely some prophecy. And in the book of Joel, the prophecy goes into the New Testament and towards the end times. Today we're just going to be looking at extracting some principles out of this for us to think about for ourselves today. So we find in Joel, in the beginning here, in Joel chapter 1, verse 1, and we're going to actually read that right now. We're going to hear that reading. Uh, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, uh, the son of... The word of the Lord came to Joel. Anybody heard of that? So God is speaking directly to Joel. How many of us feel that God is speaking directly to us? Honestly. And if you don't feel it, keep coming. So the question is, how does God speak to us? The Bible uses different examples of how God will speak to us. God has spoken through other people. Sometimes He's going to work through people. Sometimes God is going to work through your dreams to give you some insight. Sometimes God will actually speak to you directly. But the majority of times, God is going to speak to us through His Word, the Bible. That's the written Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing the what? The Word. The Word, the word of God. That's how we increase our faith. Right? That's how our faith is, is developed, through reading and understanding the Word of God. This is God's spoken Word. Let's go over to 2 Timothy we're going to be in chapter 3, 16 through 17. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And all scripture, not some of it, is given by what? Inspiration of God. Inspiration of God. And? And is profitable for doctrine, uh, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. So we see here in 2 Timothy that all scripture is given of God. Alright, so we know that the Bible is coming directly from God. 
Okay? So, hear his voice, right? When we think about Joel, Joel got spoken to directly by God. We're going to take a look at something else in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, while it is said today, if ye will hear his voice. All right, hear what it's saying here. While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice. Keep going. Harden not your hearts as in the... The day of provocation. provocation. So check it out. The Bible is telling you, if today you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. Now, I'm going to help explain for those who don't know what we're talking about here. You can actually go back to verse 11 and 12 real quick. Let's read that. Just so we hear exactly verbatim what the Bible is saying. Um, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Mm -hmm. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you evil heart or of unbelief in departing from the living God. Amen. Hear what he's saying here. Talking about the Jews coming out of Egypt. And what happened was, is they stopped following God. Now hear the warning that happened. This is a warning to us, man. This is writing to us right now. And want to read verse 12 again real quick, just so we can hear that again? Take heed, brethren. Take heed, brethren. That's talking to us, man. That's all of us in this room right now. We need to take heed, right? We need to be paying attention right now and listening clearly to what's being said. It says, take heed, brethren, unless... Lest there be in you, any of you, an evil heart of unbelief uh -huh. and departing. An evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. This is still an option for us today, family. And I know we talked about this last week, and this is not the route we're going on on this message. But we have an option to go use it again, yes? The option's available to us. If you want to go back out and do some more research, God's going to say, you know what? I'm not going to stop you. How about it? You want to live recklessly and go out and act out and all this other stuff? You can do it. Because God's not controlling us like robots. So we're getting a warning here from the Bible, from God, and saying, listen, look what happened to these people back here that were at one time following me, and then they stopped. Why did they stop? What did it say? What was the reason they stopped following God? They had a heart of unbelief. Amen. They had a heart of unbelief. They stopped believing in God and therefore departed from Him. See, if we're not staying in the Word of God on a consistent, regular basis, we also have an enemy that's walking around as a roaring lion who's trying to remove us from God. So if we're not constantly feeding and remembering and reminding ourselves and staying in communion with God, we're putting ourselves in danger of becoming unbelievers. Let me put this as an example now for the 12 steppers in the room. It's just like when you're going to meetings and you know when you're doing your 90 and 90 mm -hmm. and you're really doing your service and you're really doing your step work. How many people have experience with this? I hope everybody, but not yet, right? So listen, as you're growing spiritually, if you stop the process of doing your step work and you start to fall back and get complacent and your meeting attendance starts to wane, Right? You start falling into an area of like unbelief, right? Maybe you start to try to convince yourself that you can handle this again, or that you can act out on some behaviors and it won't be that bad. You'll be able to withstand the consequences, or maybe there won't be consequences, and you find yourself back in this place, right, of being alienated and isolated within yourself, and you just feel like going back on again, huh? Or drinking. Anybody identify those things? This is what happens when we stop feeding and hearing the word of God, family. It's the same thing for us as we're following Christ. Where do you think those principles came from in AA and NA? They were derived from the Bible. So God's saying, listen, take heed. Take heed. But the original thing that we were talking about, it, he said, listen, if you will hear his voice today. So how are they hearing his voice today? See, sometimes we might read this and say, well, these people actually heard God's voice spoken to them. Amen? Why am I not hearing God's voice? God's yelling down from the clouds at these folks. How come he's not yelling down at me? I want to hear God yell at me, right? I want to hear sometimes God is yelling at us and we don't even pay attention to it. 
Go over to real quick to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Because we're going to see here that God was talking to them through his word. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Got it? Yeah. All right. Uh, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Hebrews Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, verse 1 and 2. That's 2 Timothy. Once he gets over there, we'll read it. All right? So listen. Yep. God is going to speak to us through his word, the Bible. Check it out. You over there, reason? Yep. All right? Let us therefore fear. Lest now listen, us. hold up real quick. This is the chapter, right after chapter 3 that we were reading, that says, if you hear his voice, harden all your hearts, right? As in the day of provocation. Now it's giving us some more detail as we move into chapter 4 of Hebrews. So pay attention here. Still talking about the Jews, still talking to us. It's giving us a visual of what happened in the past, and it's saying, listen, don't let this stuff happen to you. Okay? All right, let's read that. Stop from the beginning. Let us therefore fear. Let us therefore fear, talking to us, yes. Lest a promise being left to us enter. A promise being left to us to enter into his rest, which is a visual of heaven, right? Their rest was Canaan, which was the promised land. Keep going. Um, any of you should seem to come short to it. All right. We need to pay attention. We need to not. We need to realize that that promise that we made to us, that you're going to live forever in heaven, can be removed just like it was removed from them back then because they fell into unbelief. But here's the hit now. Going into verse two. For unto uh, for unto us the gospel preached as well as All unto right. them. Slow it down. Unto us the what was preached? Gospel. gospel. The gospel. All of us right here. What's the gospel? The Bible. <laughs> Good news, yeah. The whole Bible, the good news, amen. Sometimes we hear gospel and we think Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But we're talking about the gospel, the whole Bible, the good news. All right? How do we know that that's what he's talking about? Keep reading. Um, but the word preached did not profit them, not being Stop mixed. Stop the beginning real quick. Yep. For unto Listen, us. For unto us the gospel is preached. As well as unto them. As well as unto them. Everyone hear that? The same gospel that we have preached right now is the same gospel they heard. When the Jews come out of Egypt, was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John written yet? No. It didn't happen. Jesus hadn't come up on the scene yet as a man. All right? So the same gospel that the Jews heard, this is what the Bible's saying, is the same gospel that we're hearing. So we just got a warning. Right? Do not depart from the living God by a spirit of unbelief, right? Do not, hey, listen, because that promise that was given to them that they're going to end up in the promised land, they didn't receive it. The same promise that's being offered to you, you might not receive it. So let's hear what the end of it is saying. Um, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Amen. So they have a lack of faith. And a lack of and a lack of belief. Amen? Amen. So those are two principles just supposed to hold on to today. It's not the idea of the message, but it's a little sidebar, it's a little extra nugget. Alright? But the but the thing is, it's saying if you hear his voice, and how do they hear his voice? The through the gospel. They heard his voice through the gospel. So Joel was spoken to by God in Joel chapter one, verse one. We're going to go back over to that now. But I but I wanted to point that out because sometimes you might feel like, oh, why isn't God talking to me? Sometimes it's because we're not involved in the conversation. Sometimes it's because we're the ones praying and we're doing all the talking. I don't know if anybody can identify, but we're going down and praying before God, amen, which is great. This is what we're supposed to do. But we're not hearing from God. We feel like we're not hearing from God. But it just told us. If you hear, today if you would hear his voice. Listen, everyone who's in the room right now, we're hearing his voice. That's why when I carry these messages, it's not the Keith Anderson show up here. It's not my job to give you my opinion or my spin or my take or how this relates to the, you know what I mean, whatever. Sometimes I'm related to recovery so we can get in a better understanding. But it's not my job to try to Add or take away from the Bible. That's why we read all the scriptures that we read so we get an understanding for ourselves. So he said, listen, if you're going to hear my voice today, harden on your hearts as in the day of the provocation. And they were hearing his voice through the gospel. 
So when, so when you're looking for God to speak to you, it's important to pick up His Word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the Word of God. Let's actually go over to Romans 10. Romans chapter 10, we're going to read verse 9 through 17, the very popular two verses that are very popular in the beginning, just to establish this principle thing. Alright, just so we can establish this as principle of God speaking to us. Uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Have I heard that before? Mm -hmm. If you confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, it's got to be a real belief. Hey, also I want to remind you, this is a daily belief. Paul, the writer, also said, I die daily. He said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Amen? Amen. All right? Jesus in Luke 9, chapter 23, he said, listen, if any man want to follow after me, he said, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow after me. So this is a day at a time process. So when we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, we need to be doing this daily. This isn't a one-time event. Sometimes it's presented as a one-time event. But listen, they believed too, the Jews believed at one time. They followed Moses out of Egypt. They went through the Red Sea when the sea was parted. But still we're reading in the Bible that God's saying these people fell out. And if you go back and read Hebrews chapter 3 for yourself, it says that carcasses fell out in the desert. That's how God described the people that once believed him and then stopped believing him. And then it goes on to say that we should not be, be, take heed unless you have an unbelieving heart. So we need to pay attention to that stuff. Man. It's a day at a time process. Just like recovery, same thing. It's a day at a time. You can't stay clean off yesterday's shower. Amen? Mm -hmm. Alright? Keep reading though. So let's check out what else we have in this section of scripture here. Uh, for with the heart uh, man believeth unto righteousness, yes. and with the mouth uh, confession is made unto salvation. You gotta put it out there. You believe it in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and don't be scared. When it comes time to profess your belief in front of other people, when they might think you're a little weird, or they might you, you might think they don't want to hear what you're going to have to say, or you think they're going to be like, Ugh. you think these prophets in the Old Testament ran around and said, oh, they might not. They probably don't hear what God said. You think they cared? They cared. They fell short. They made mistakes too, family, just like us. But when God said, listen, you go ahead and do that, they were stepping to kings. They were stepping to all kinds of people. There's a lot of things the prophets ran into, and they risked their lives. And some of it cost them their lives. So we need to confess with our mouths to Jesus as Lord as well. we we'll keep going. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Yes. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. No difference. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. That's right. He ain't discriminating. Anybody can call upon the Lord and he's going he's gonna to receive you. Keep going. Out of a pure heart, out of a sincere heart, family. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's right. How then shall they call? Now on? here's the question. Here's the question, everybody, right? We just found out that if you call on the name of the Lord and you believe in your heart, you are saved. Amen? Mm. All right. Here's the question now that God is presenting to you. Start from the beginning. How then shall they call on him, him in whom they have not believed? How then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? Can you imagine, right, that one day... Y'all walking down the street, and someone comes running up, and they're like, hey, hey, you got a second? They're like, listen, I'm going to talk to you about this guy named Larry. Larry is unbelievable, and Larry loves you, and Larry wants to just take you with him up to this fantasy place where you can pack giraffes, and you can wrestle with tigers, and, and Larry's this great guy, and like you really like him, and all this stuff, right? And you're going to be like... <laughs> Who's lying? What are you talking about? Right? Mm -hmm. we got to explain the situation, family. It says, how are they going to believe in whom they have not heard? You're rolling up talking about somebody and they're like, what are you talking about, dude? 
doesn't even make sense. Let's keep on going. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How are they going to believe in him if they haven't heard? We need to explain who Jesus Christ is. We need to understand for ourselves who Christ is. Christ isn't some dude that just showed up one day on planet Earth and did a bunch of nice stuff. Jesus has been since the beginning. In the beginning, the Word was with God. Everyone heard that? He was around in the beginning, family. Anyone ever heard of the burning bush? Mm -hmm. You remember what the bush said? When Moses said, uh, who am I going to say that sent me? I am, I am. I am. You tell him, I am sent you, is what he said. Then Jesus comes, saying, I am. But he was in the flesh as a man. Jesus was already established. Who do you think gave Moses the law? Jesus Christ has been the same and has not changed the Bible says. So we need to understand the whole picture of who Jesus Christ is. Right? We need to understand the beginning from the end. So maybe when we talk to people, we say, listen, have you ever thought about, like, the way things have been created around you? The way that we see the sun come out? You know, and start talking about things that, that like, make people question. Right? Think about the Creator. Jesus was there from the beginning with God. So we need to we need to have the whole story, right? So it says, how are they going to believe on Him who they have not heard? This is just some food for thought. And we're just establishing one principle in this message, but we're going to keep on moving. Everybody with me here? All right. Want to read the rest of that, Ethan? Yeah. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? Praise God. Everyone's in here this morning. I'm the guy doing the preaching. How shall they hear without a preacher? Well, now you're starting to hear. The whole package, man. We've got to hear the whole enchilada here. The gospel isn't just four books. It's the whole enchilada. All right? We've got to take the whole thing down, beginning to the end. We don't just, we don't just say, oh, I believe in Jesus Christ, and let's just take... You know, Malachi, all the way to Genesis, rip that out of my Bible and toss it to the side. Because all I need to do is read the New Testament. Because then I get to the New Testament and I get the Hebrews and it tells me the gospel is the whole Bible. And I'm like, what happened? Right? Sometimes it'll say, Jesus sometimes is talking about the law. And he's referencing the book of Psalms. Which is a book of songs, basically, and poems. And he's saying it's the book of the law. Well, what does that mean? The entire Bible is the law of God. This is the law of man. This is it. Um, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Mm -hmm. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad, and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. But Amen. they... But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Esaias saith the Lord, uh, Who hath believed our report? Mm. So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and hearing by the word, the of, word God. of God. You see how it all gets put together, family? See, sometimes we want to pull a little verse out here and there, but we've got to put the whole package together. Alright? Your know, faith is going to come by hearing, hearing the word of God. How am I going to know about Jesus? Through the preaching, through the Bible. What's the preacher preaching? He's preaching the Bible, amen? Should be. Hopefully he is. Alright, back over to Joel now. So Joel was spoken to by God. Now we established the principle that God will speak to us through his word. He will use other avenues as well. We know we'll speak through dreams, we'll speak through people. But primarily, if you want to have more faith, you want to increase your faith, it comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. Amen? Amen. All right, Joel chapter 1 now. Back over to Joel. Now we're going to hear about this prophet. Let's read verse 2 and 3. Hear, ye, uh, hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Yes. Hath this been in our days or even in the days of your fathers yes tell tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children tell another generation amen listen joel's talking about some stuff that happened some stuff some plagues came into town here all right some locusts 
Hey, some of us will hear about some locusts. We think, well, who cares about some locusts? When you get out of this church session, if you don't know about locusts, Google up locusts attacks. Swarms of locusts is coming through, right? Hey, what do they do? They wipe everything out. See you later. You were hungry? Not anymore. Stay hungry because them things ate up all your crops, right? They cruised through and they destroyed things. So the, so the people at the time, Joel was saying, have we ever seen anything like this before? That's what he's saying in these verses. He's like, have your people ever seen something like this before? This is his opening. This is what God spoke to him to go and say to the people. He's like, listen up, guys. We just saw a travesty happen in our own area. Have you ever seen something like this before, family? Have you ever seen this type of destruction, this type of, this type of situation happen before? There was an economic hardship in the land because the food got wiped down, right? They were struggling as a people at this time, as a nation. And Joel is sent in this time to give them a warning. He's saying, have you guys ever seen this before? How about us in the United States? You ever look back at the past five years and thought to yourself, have we ever seen something like this before? Yes, this is historical accounts of other plagues and things like this. Hundreds of years ago, hundred years ago, whatever. But in our lifetime, have we ever seen this kind of things happen? Let's go back to 2019. Are things a lot different today in 2023 than they were in 2019? Look at things that are going on around us. The things that people are saying, the things that are normalized, the things that, that happened in 2022. A lot of us have never seen stuff like that. One day you're chilling, and the next day, you're not chilling. You're in your apartment, locked in. People lost their jobs. A lot of stuff happened, man. A lot of stuff happened. And we're not going to get into all those details, but we can think about Joel as God speaking to him at that time. He's giving the people, and, it's, and it, he's, he's grabbing their attention. He's saying, have you guys ever seen anything like this before? Joel goes on in that chapter to warn the people. He says, listen, God's not happy with what you guys got going on. You guys need to turn from the stuff that you're doing as a nation. He goes to the leaders of the nation. He goes to the people of the nation. Check it out. He wasn't scared to confess his faith. He wasn't scared to voice his, 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 his belief in God. Right? Just like we, ne we need not be afraid to voice our belief in Jesus Christ and in God the Father. He wasn't just going to like, you know, the little old lady down the street that was like really nice and stuff talking to her. He was going to the kings, the rulers. Listen, back then they were just, they didn't want to hear what you had to say. Get him out of here. Smoke him. All right? So he had a lot of courage and he was going to his people and saying, listen, look what just happened, man. Have you guys ever seen anything like this happen before? He's like, listen, this is nothing compared to the vengeance that's going to happen in the day of the Lord. This is a theme all throughout the prophets, man. They talk about the day of the Lord. Hey, check it out. We haven't seen the day of the Lord yet. Man. The day of the Lord is coming. Look at the signs and the times and the things that are happening around us. And for us as believers, we need to praise God. But listen, if our life isn't lined up where we think it should be with Jesus Christ, then we might have, we, we better reevaluate what we're doing here. If we find ourselves in some stuff that we know we're not supposed to be in, then we gotta put some effort and some prayer and some dedication into in some repentance. Right? Turning from that thing. Sometimes we want to do some stuff that we know we're not supposed to. And we got to make a decision at some point to say, I'm not doing that no more. I'm walking away from that stuff. Not on your own willpower, but with God working through you. And God gives us humility. God says, listen, remove the prideful heart. 
hard and hard. In the beginning I said a prayer asking for, the, for, for God to soften our hearts. When people used to say, oh, you need to soften your heart, I'd be like, I can't soften my heart. I, man, i got to be hard. I don't know where you came from. You can't run around soft. You kidding me? You will step right on you. Take full advantage of it. You had to be, have the edge of all you. God's saying, listen, soften your heart, man. I'm going to take care of it. Do we want to trust him in that? Right? Trust in him and go into him humbly. And, and listen, God says, listen, be humble. So whatever you're struggling with, I'm going to put some people around you. And I'm going to give you a process, a solution for you to heal from that stuff. I'm going to put people around you that are going to comfort you. I'm going to put people around you that are going to love you. And so you can learn to love yourself. We have to trust in that thing. Let's go over to Joel chapter 2 verse 12 and 13. Because now Joel starts to give it. Through God's voice, remember, some of the solution to his people. Everybody with me so far? Am I boring nobody yet? Alright, good. What time are we looking at? Alright. Alright, good, good. Alright. Joel chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Therefore, also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even Oh, I want to stop you right there. Before we even go to that, right? I want to give another example, right? When he's talking about the things that people went through. Hey, it's it's like an example of like a relapse. Think of it like this, all right? You know when you see someone, they go back out and they relapse. And they had some time clean or they had some time sober. And the person went back out. And when you last saw them, they were bright. And they had that glow. And they were clean. And they were healthy. And they had some weight on them. And then they disappeared off to active addiction. And then you run into them. Hey, and they don't look like the same person anymore. Mm. And you're like, whoa. Oh. You're like, man, what happened? Hey, how sad is that? And you see that destruction that took over something, right? That's the same kind of stuff, man. Sometimes God will put us around and allow us to see that stuff as a warning. So we remember where we came from. And we say, oh, I need to tighten up my program, man. You ever saw someone go back out and you were like, and you doing the same stuff they're doing before they went back out. And it's like a spiritual awakening happens. It's like God spoke to you and said, listen, you need to wake up. You better stop acting out on those things. All right, Joel chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. And let's go to the, some of the solution pieces here. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Now God's giving, giving his people the thing. He's saying, listen, now turn to me with all of your heart. He's like, look, you just saw what just happened. This is just a taste of the vengeance of God that's going to come across. He's like, listen, I don't want you guys living like this. I don't want you suffering like this. Turn to me with all your heart. Keep going. And with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. With fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Okay. And rend your heart, and not not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Yes. Listen. God's giving them a solution right now, right? God's giving us a solution as well. Notice that it's the same God in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that He's merciful and loving, mm -hmm. right? He's forbearing. He doesn't want people suffering. He doesn't want to have to dole out some consequence. You know when you're, you know when you're a parent and your kid does something and you're like, Ugh, and you got to discipline them? <laughs> and you don't want to? Mm -hmm. You don't want to punish them, man. You don't want to send them to their room. They're going to cry. They're going to blaspheme you. Right? It's uncomfortable. And we don't want to do it. Why? Because we love them. But we love them so much and we know if we don't do it that they're not going to grow up right. That they're going to have more problems in their lives. And that they're going to cause more problems in other people's lives if we don't correct this. Right? God looks at it the same way. But notice where he talks about fasting. And this, this isn't, this is like a little, a little side piece for us just to take a look at in fasting. We hear about fasting in the Old Testament, right? How many people go to another church? Side from this. You guys ever hear about fasting? You do? Amen. Well, praise God, man. Fasting is 
a spiritual practice of discipline and connects us to God. See, a lot of the times it's presented like fasting is something in the Old Testament that we don't have to do anymore. And now that we have Jesus Christ, you got Christ, you don't have to do all that stuff. That's how it's presented sometimes. That's not the case, family. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. We're going to do a barrage of verses here just to establish some principles. We're over in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites. Moreover, when you fast. See, Jesus didn't say, don't fast. He said, no, when you fast, right? And he goes on to say, don't be as the hypocrites because they mess their faces up. Because they're like, I'm fasting. He's like, no, fast in private. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not running around here talking about, you know what I mean, all this other stuff. Just fast and be about your business and don't, you know, don't draw attention to yourself. He's like, because you already have your reward if you're doing that. Right? So we're supposed to fast. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 and 15, please. And again, we're just establishing some biblical principle here so we can see that what was said in the Old Testament is still applicable today in the New Testament. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, mm -hmm. Why do we and the Pharisees fast off by the disciples, but the disciples fast not? And now check it out. They're like, listen, John's dude, uh, John the Baptist, everyone knows who John the Baptist is? Mm -hmm. He came the way and paved the way, right? He's talking about this and repentance. It's time to turn. There's the Messiah is coming, right? He was, he was a front runner. He was a prophet then. He was a prophet, right? And his people that were following John the Baptist, they are fasting. The Pharisees are fasting. Jesus' disciples, they're not fasting. They're like, how come you guys aren't fasting? It's like, what's going on with you dudes? So let's hear the response. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? Mm -hmm. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. And what? And then shall they fast. When the bridegroom is taken from them, mm -hmm. which was Jesus Christ, amen? amen? After Jesus died and was resurrected, now he's not rolling with them anymore. We fast to draw near to God. Jesus was God in the flesh with his people. He's like, why do they fast right now? I'm right here. <laughs> they don't need to fast right now. He's like, but I'm going to be out of here. And then they will fast. Amen? Amen. All right, let's keep going just to make sure that we got this right. Let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. Again, New Testament. Now, this is after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is the book of Acts. This is the Acts of the Apostles. And let's see what we got going on over there. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, mm -hmm. and Saul, for the work whereof thou I have called them. Amen. So there you go, right there. Keep, uh, keep on. Think of some more. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Too fast. Everybody hear that? Too fast. They fasted and prayed and the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Yes? And what did he say? Separate Paul and Barnabas. One's going over here and the other one's going over here. Alright? On separate missions. Plus they have a little bit of the little kind of weren't getting along all that crazy. It's okay, family, if that happens sometimes, right? He said, let's get these guys out of here. But notice what they did. They fasted first and they prayed. And then they fasted again to send them on their missions. They fasted and prayed over them, right? So these principles are just as valid today as they were the day they were formulated. Amen? Mm -hmm. Acts 14, verse 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church. Now they're developing the church. And they ordained elders in every church. And then? And had prayed with fasting. Prayed with fasting. They commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Amen. They picked a bunch of people. They ordained them. They did this through prayer and fasting. Just hold on to these principles, man. We're going to go one more place. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. I'll read. 
Who's got first Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5? Now we're back. <laughs> Defraud ye. Not one the other. Yes. Accept it be with consent for a time. Yes. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer ah. and come together again. Amen. Know what we're talking about here, married folks? Yeah. Defraud you not one another. It's talking about the wife and the husband. It's saying, don't hold back that due affection. God's saying, listen, you guys need to be hooking up often. Showing each other love. That's what the Bible says. It says that the woman has no power over her body, but the man does. The man has no power over his body, but the woman does. God's saying that. Why? So you guys don't go running around cheating on each other. But he says, hey, unless you're dedicating yourself to a time of prayer and fasting, but then come back together quickly so the enemy doesn't test, uh, tempt you with what it says. Amen? Amen. All right. So we got to understand the principle of fasting. Thing. Sometimes we got to we got to hold off on some stuff to draw close to God. And yes, primarily we're talking about food. Mm. Right? we got to abstain from some stuff for a while, right? Feel a little bit of hunger inside of yourself. It's not going to kill you. Take some time to be apart from some stuff, right? Hey, it's good when you fast too. Sometimes you got to take a fast from your phone. And just spend some time with God and some prayer. When you see these things happening outside in the world, and you're like, man, right? And you know the time is drawing near. Take some time and, and stay with God in prayer and in fasting. Watch your spiritual relationship with God grow. These are principles that were established long ago. Notice in Joel in chapter 13, it says, Rend your heart and not your garment. Right? He's talking to the people that aren't walking that close with God. And he's saying, listen, I'm giving you guys a warning. And you guys need to repent and turn from it. And when he's talking about rend your garment, anyone knows what that means? Rend your garment? I find this really funny. Rend. Keith knows what it means. Yeah. To... In the Old Testament, they would tear their clothes. Anybody ever watch Superbook? <laughs> God would rebuke them in their form of repenting and showing that they were sorry and they ripped their clothes. Right? You gotta watch Superbook sometime. I recommend that. That's a little carnal thing I'm throwing out there for you, right? So hey, listen. So it can help. It can help. It can help you understand the Bible. It illustrates a little bit more. So they would tear their clothes. God's saying, listen, don't just tear your clothes saying you're sorry. No, tear your heart, man. Rend your heart to God. Be sorry within your heart. Don't be sorry on that external stuff. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to be like, oh yeah, I'm really sorry. No, no. It's like, the, it's like you know, listen, you break somebody's window, and you just go over there with a real sad face. I'm so sorry. I broke the window. I'm so sorry. Are you going to fix it? I'm going to be getting your credit card out here to Home Depot and fixing this thing. You know what I mean? Fix the window. I just ran. Let's just talk about you're sorry. Do something about it. Change that situation, right? You're throwing fastballs in your backyard? Repent! Stop throwing fastballs in the backyard, man. You're breaking people's windows. Oh, you're really sorry? Okay, then show you're sorry. Go fix the window, right? Rend your heart before God. You're causing damage in other people's lives because you're so self-centered and self-absorbed, and it's all about you, and your pain, and your sorrow, and your hurt, and your loneliness, and you feeling rejected, so you want to use other people to make yourself feel better? Knock it off. Y'all seeing people hurt and devastated by your actions? Don't just say sorry. Stop the behavior. Repent from the behavior. Pray and ask God to give you a softened heart. Pray and ask God to exam help you examine yourself so you stop acting out on the same things and causing damage in all these different areas in your lives. Listen. We need to rely on God. 2 Corinthians 17, uh, 7, verse 10, 
says that godly sorrow worketh repentance. When we're truly inside, we're like, man, God, I really know I did wrong on this man. Listen, I'll give you an example. Sometimes I get in a little tiff with the old lady at the house. <laughs> Hey, 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 and like, there's been a time my son's like, hey, knock it off. Five years old, man. I'm up here preaching. Living spiritual principles. Let me pray with you, brother. You don't think that causes godly sorrow? Mm -hmm. What I'm like, dude, what am I doing, man? You know what I mean? When I allow that anger, when I get foothold to the enemy, the Bible says... And I can't operate on the pride and say, I'll fix it. I'll correct it. No, I, I'm not, I, I don't have it, man. I'm a weak vessel. Without Christ, apart from Christ, I can do nothing. The enemy will have his way with me. And that's what he does. So that godly sorrow makes me want to stop that stuff, man. Right? That godly sorrow inside, I see that. The, the, the pain caused by, by the actions that we make and we say, I don't want to do that no more. So we repent and we stop doing that stuff. So now when a situation comes up and we want to blow in on like a storm on somebody, right? We're going to come and get you. We got to say, sometimes you're going to just choke it back, man. Sometimes something will irritate you and you ain't gone into that place of that process to like be healed in that area, and the enemy's like, just handle that, right? Anyone ever heard the enemy's voice? Straighten it right now. Let them have it. You can't have that stuff, right? And sometimes you're ready to go, like, and you just gotta go <laughs> and bounce. Get out of dodge so you don't sin. So you don't have to keep feeling that godly sorrow. Amen? Amen? So God was speaking to his people back then. He said, listen, you guys got to, listen, recommit, man. Recommit. And remember, this is the daily process for us, right? We got to recommit. We got to stay in the solution. Hey, listen, sometimes things happen to us and we don't have godly sorrow. And when you don't have godly sorrow and you're acting out on sin, that's when you got to be a little concerned. Okay? Because when we act out and we feel that godly sorrow, like, man, I shouldn't have done that, we feel that guilt, that's the Holy Spirit going, let's go, man, get with the program. You know, I love you, I need you over here with me. Knock it off. You're suffering. Okay? I got you. Not everyone goes for it. Let's go over to Revelation 16 9. See, sometimes God is going to rebuke us. And put that feeling in our heart. We need to praise God. And be like, God, thank you so much that you love me. And I know you forgive me, right? Seek the forgiveness and act on repentance. Because if it's coming into your heart. Then, then, good catch. Hey, if it's coming into your heart. Then like, you got to turn back to God. Then praise God, man. Because that's a blessing. Because there's some people that can care less. And there might have been some times in our lives when we care less. Amen. Listen, look at what Revelation 16, 9 is saying. And men were scorched with great heat, mm -hmm. and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. They repented not. Check it out. God put rain and fire down on you. And they're like, I'm not. Right? Hey, and they're like, Good God, you crazy. They repented not. They refused to give him glory. See, sometimes some stuff will happen in our lives that's hard. We'll go through some crises. And do we want to rely on God and say, you know what? I need to, I need to go to God, man. Listen, sometimes God will send some fears into our lives and we're like, I gotta go to God, man. And we recommit to God. And because of that situation, we give our hearts back to God, right? Some of us don't. Some people just turn the other direction. Stuff starts happening. They're like, oh, there's a drop off. And they go in a different direction. Man. we got to be careful that's not us. So when we're feeling that call, we sorrow inside, right? Hey, listen, that's a blessing for us, family. That's a blessing. For the people that were hurt, hearing God back then, 
And they heard him and they said, listen, we need to repent. We need to stop this stuff. They were the blessed people. But there were some people that just weren't trying to hear it back then. Some people were like, yeah, whatever. See you later. Get this guy Joel out of here. They ain't trying to hear him. Right? And we got to re realize too, listen, like, God was warning them and telling them, listen, some stuff is going to happen. Just like he's telling us stuff is going to happen. And we need to know God is not slack on his promises. You know, in the Old Testament, the prophets, they weren't walking around every day. Okay? The prophets came over different hundred year periods. Sometimes there was a couple prophets at the same time. And sometimes there was no prophets. We might be living in a time right now where there's no prophets around us. Warning us, right? Well, maybe there is. You know what I'm saying? The point is, is like, just because you might not see something like spectacular happening from God in this very moment, doesn't mean God isn't with us. God is not slack on his promises, as some count slackness. This is what 2 Peter 3 9 says. God being merciful and long-suffering was established way back. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, he says, listen, I'm merciful, I'm long-suffering. God's not trying to just wipe people down. Sometimes, you know, we, we look at stuff in the Old Testament and we think, man, God was nothing nice. God was just smoking people all over the place. They don't want to do what I want them to do? Smite them, smite them, smite them. No, that's not what was going on here. God works with us. He takes care of us. So I wanted to say this, right? If, if anyone is sitting here this morning and you're like, you're hearing some stuff and you're thinking, man, i got to change some things, praise God for that. If you're feeling that way, then guess what? You need to change things. Some things need to change. And that's okay. You're in a room full of people we all got some stuff to change. Amen? Amen. We all got some stuff to work on. We want to work with God and with each other and within that love. But we want to take our will back and suffer some more destruction. I don't know about anybody else. I've had enough consequences. Anyone identify to that? You can get off the pain train anytime. We're going to read some scriptures today. We're going to be coming into a conclusion. All right. Let's hear uh, 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, mm. and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heed their land. Heal their land. Amen, family. Anyone hear the word of God here? My people. My people, let's go to Psalms 38, 18. For I will declare mine iniquity, I will be sorry for my sin. Amen. The psalmist is writing, I will declare my iniquity, these are my sins, and I will be sorry for my sins. Let's go to Psalms 51, uh, verses 9 through 15. Hide, hide thy face from my sins, and mm -hmm. blot out all mine iniquities. Yes. Create in me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yes. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Mm. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, yes. and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Amen. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O oh God, thou God, of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O oh Lord, open Thou my lips and my mouth shall chew forth thy praise. Amen. Notice that he's talking about the book of Psalms, talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't something that's dropped out the sky in an axe. Finished. The Holy Spirit has been operating since the beginning as well. Amen? Mm -hmm. And hear what he's saying. He's saying, listen, forgive me of my sins. Don't turn your face from me, right? Give me a clean heart. Get, you know, give me a Holy Spirit, Father, right? Forgive me for the things that I'm doing wrong, and then I'm able to go out and help some other people. That's the mission, family, right? We get some forgiveness, we get some healing in some areas, and we get closer to Christ. Now we've got to go and share with some other people. It's our 12th step. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we carry the message. 
to other addicts that still suffer. A lot of times it's happening right here. In the group. In the home group. <laughs> right? We're in the home group right now. Let's go over to Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7. Uh, seek, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Call ye upon him while he is near. Yes. Let he wicked forsake his way, and let the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. Yes. And to our Lord, he will, he will abundantly pardon. Amen. Abundantly pardon. We need to turn back to God, family. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Here goes John the Baptist. I need to baptize you with the water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, who, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Amen. Turn over to, uh, let's do Matthew. I think I gave you Matthew 9 13 too, right? Mm -hmm. All right. But go ye and learn what thy, that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus Christ talking. He said, I'm not, I didn't come here to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Listen, as, as Christians, as a family here, right, we're so blessed with an opportunity. Like, God made our lives kind of easy. Because a lot of us are in recovery. So we got the sick and suffering addict, sinner, whatever you want to say, coming into the, into the rooms with us, right? We got an audience. We got a, it's like they're getting brought right to us. We don't even have to jump on a plane and go somewhere and, you know, do a, do a mission trip. We got a mission trip right here. We're right here in the trenches. A lot of little to. <laughs> Acts chapter 13, verse 24. Who's got that one? Who is it? Yeah, Acts chapter 13, verse 24. Yeah, I gave it to somebody. Yeah, you read I read that already. Probably easy. No, not that one. No, I don't have it written down. Acts 13, verse 24. I got it. Huh? 13, verse 24. No, I didn't do that one. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Uh, when John had first preached before his coming, the Baptist of repentance to all the people of Israel. Mm. Preaching the message of repentance, man. Repentance is huge. You got to turn from some stuff, turn from some wickedness, right? We're going to go over to Acts chapter 2, verse 36 before 47. This is the end of our last verses here. And we're just going to take a look at a little bit of a, a message here from the book of Acts. This is Peter talking to some people. And basically let them know what time it is. Let's, let's go over to verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made... That same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Check it out. He's rebuking the people right after Jesus uh, was resurrected. And he's telling the Jews that they crucified the Messiah. Amen? He's saying, you guys killed the Messiah. This is what he checked them. Keep going. Now when ye heard this, they were prickled in their heart. Prickled in their heart. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, They were looking for a solution. He's like, listen, you guys didn't do the right thing. And they were like, what do we do? They were pricked in their heart, the Bible says. That means God got a hold of their heart. Remember the example of the, of the people that got burnt up and they were still blaspheming God? Those people pricked in their hearts too. If we move forward later on into Acts chapter 7, we see that when Stephen was approaching the Pharisees, it says they were pricked in their hearts too. But they didn't repent. They killed Stephen because of what he said. 
They got hit in the heart too. They were like, man, I know what, this, what he's saying is right. And they killed him. These people got hit in the heart. And they're like, what do we do? How do we make this right? And now he gives them a solution. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all of that that are far off, yes. even as many as the Lord our God shall He's call. He's talking about you can break the chains, family. Listen, he's like the promises are to you, your children, and far off. Listen, when we get clean and we come into a relationship with Christ, we've broken some chains of sin that might have been attached to our family for generations. I don't know about anybody else, but my kids are growing up different than how I grew up. Now I talk about people with the old lady, but hey, check it out. They don't deal with the stuff that I dealt with as a kid. Because I have God in my life. Because I have Jesus Christ in my life. We had, we had, a, we were talking the other night, right? We had like a big, you know, a game night. We had a bunch of people come over and we had fun. Hey, and the kids are running around and they're like, you know, they're popping up. And, you know, we get loud and we're playing the game. And they're like, why are you being so loud? And like joking and screaming at the same time with us, right? Hey, I don't, it wasn't like that when I was a kid growing up. We didn't have those safe gatherings. There was a lot of alcohol around, right? Hey, there was some stuff you, you know, some smells in the house that you shouldn't be smelling as a little kid. Sometimes it got real bad. Sent to your room where people were doing all kinds of evil stuff. The parents that were raising us. I know some of us can identify. We have an option to break those things. For generations to come now. Because we're going to be teaching our children the ways of God. We're going to be instilling some principles into them. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this uh, untoward generation. Yes. Then they gladly received his word and were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them 3,000 souls. Gladly received the word. They were baptized. They knew. They knew what was, what was going on. These are people right now. I know we talked about in the beginning, too. About, you know, going to someone and be like, do you know Larry and this and that? Listen, these weren't some dudes that like, do you know Larry? Okay? These were guys that knew God. These were the Jews. They were following God. They were from the beginning. They understood the Torah. They understood the law. They understood all these things. They understood the prophecies and, and, and the prophets when they were talking about the Messiah that was supposed to come in Daniel uh, chapter 9. They understood. That it all came to light for them right now, right? They understood what they read in Isaiah was talking about Jesus Christ. And they were like, whoa, wait a minute. And they realized that they killed the Messiah. So these were already people that believed. So right away, they repented and they were baptized. And now they moved into the solution. And this is going to be where we close, right? Now they start getting into the solution. We're going to see what they did in the book of Acts. How they, how they came together again. How they helped each other. How they continued in this process together. Because they didn't get baptized and then everyone went their own way. So see you later. I'm all set. I've been baptized. I got my certificate. I'm out. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine they stayed. They received Christ. They received baptism. Right? Hey, and they stayed steadfastly in the doctrine. They stayed in the word of God. They didn't waver. And what else did they do? And in breaking of bread and in prayers. All the time. The people stayed together. They stayed together reading the word of God. They stayed together having meals together. They united as family. And they even went the extra mile and did this. Keep going. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Yes. And all See, the, the power started to happen then. God's Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. I'll give you a small example. Anyone been to a meeting before and there's a good amount of recovery in that meeting and you feel a spirit in that meeting, you feel a presence and you're like, wow. And you leave, you're like, that meeting was awesome. Mm -hmm. And you're ready to go. Take on the world after that one meeting. And then the next two days you don't go to a meeting and you're back to being irritable and discontent. Forgot all about that good stuff you heard in that meeting. 
We've got to stay consistent. Man, this is what's happening. Man. These people are gathering regularly. They have the Spirit of God in them. They stayed in the Apostles' doctrine, it said. They continued to break bread together. They did all these things together. And they kept doing even more stuff. Listen to this. Uh, and all that believed were together and had all things common. All that believed were together and they had all things in common. They weren't battling over stuff that God says plainly. They weren't getting all these little vain disputes and stuff. They all were in one accord. They all believed the same thing. And they stayed together. They were close-knit. That's what, that's what we're supposed to be as Christians, man. Listen, the enemy's going to try so hard to separate us. As you get closer to God, you'll start to see it. You'll start to notice the enemy is working on some people. With the gossip and all this other stuff. And judging this one and all this other thing. You'll start catching it. And they kept doing more stuff. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Check that out, man. All these people got together. So convicted, right? They, they all sold their stuff to them. And pulled it all together and lived in one community. And they all took care of each other. So everyone was on the same playing field. You had X amount of family over here in this house. They had that right amount of food. You had this over here, so there wasn't anyone that was like all hooked up, and some other people weren't. Imagine if we did that today. All of us got together and, and, and just got rid of all our stuff and spread it all. Out. Seems like so far off, huh? But these are people. These are God's people. The first letter of Revelation is talking about these people right here. We'll get to that another time. Let's just wrap this one up. And they, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. How often? Uh, daily. Daily, okay. And breaking bread from house to house, uh, mm -hmm. did eat their meat with gladness and sing, singleness of heart, yes. praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily uh, such as should be saved. Amen, man. Listen, that's what we should be striving for, family. Striving for the unity. Striving for the closeness. Getting together often. So we don't forget. We got the built-in togetherness. We got to keep stay with each other, man. Building each other up. Empowering each other. Right? Yeah, hey, sometimes it gets exhausting. Sometimes you think, oh, I'm not the person that should be doing this. But listen, if you're feeling like the other person should be doing it, the other person should be doing it. If God put it on you, God put it on you. So just pray and ask Him to give you the strength. So the conclusion for today's message is this, right? We need to pay attention to what's going on around us. Just like the prophet Joel that pointed out to the people, we need to take a look at the times that we're living in, right? We need to realize that God is real. This stuff is not made up. There's some real stuff happening around us, and God is on his way back. We need to draw near to God as we see these times approaching, even more so, as we catch ourselves slipping, or if we find that we're over here, we need to get back over here, and how are we doing that? One key principle that we found out today is through, is through fasting and prayer, together. Not saying anyone's going to go on a fast right now, you can if you want. We can declare a fast right now, man, we really should. But they stay committed in this process, right? We need to stay committed. We need to identify the things that are, that, are, that are wrecking our lives, right? The things that are sinning that separate us from God, and we need to kill those things, the Bible says. Do you know the Bible actually says that? Kill your sin? Colossians, I believe, chapter 3, verse 16 says, Mortify those things that are in your flesh. Mortify means kill it. It's actually a pretty cool rap song. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> help it. A little bit carnal, a little bit spiritual. Alright? But we need to kill those things in our lives, man, to separate us from God. Kill it. Don't play with it. You ever have a cat? Anyone have a cat? Curiosity. You get a mice, mouse in the house, and you find your cat just swatting <laughs> it around, messing with it, picks it up, spits it out, slaps it, and you're like, what are you doing? All of a sudden, the mouse gets away real quick. The cat's like, 
looking around, all dumb, because the mouse dipped on it. You want to strangle the cat, because it didn't kill the mouse. Y'all like, kill the mouse, dude. I know my wife used to do it. Stanley used to get, get mice all the time. He'd be flipping it around, the end, playing games. <laughs> kill that thing. Think That's what it. God's saying about your sin. Don't play with it. Don't keep entertaining the nonsense, man. Kill that stuff. And repent. Stop it, right? Hey, and then we start to live in harmony with Christ. We start to have peace, man. We have unity. We feel the love. We feel at home. We feel together. These are the promises of God. All right, we're going to bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, God, uh, just thank you, God, for your word, the Bible. I thank you for all the people that are here today, God. And I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will just reach into each and every one of our hearts, God, and, and just hold us firmly, Father. I ask you to strengthen all of the people here. Strengthen all of us, God. Give us your courage to do the things that we know that is right in your sight. Help us to have peace today. Help us to have pure love. Please bless this food that we're about to eat. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.